Good morning, baseball fans. Chris Terrell here with RotorPros.com to bring you my core plays for Monday, July 29th. We've got a seven-game slate tonight, so a little bit smaller slate. We do got some good options in pitching. Um, it is a Coors slate, so we've got a game. We've got the Dodgers uh, going into Coors Field, so that's going to you know, skew things as it always does when it comes to ownership, especially when we're talking small slates, so we've got to think about that as well. Um, so with these seven teams, we've got a little bit of weather going on. Um, the only one I'm really concerned with tonight is Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. I got it marked as a three in my sheet right now. It's about, you know, we're we're about eight hours here from from game time, and it looks like there's about thirty to forty five percent chance of rain. I'll be checking that uh, um, as we go through the day here and updating. You know, a couple hours before lock as well when we need to really bear down and make our decisions um, you can follow along with all my weather updates over on our members chat and if you're not a member yet make sure to sign up get over to rotorpros.com sign up for your free trial whether you're looking at a weekly monthly or yearly subscription if you use promo code MLB from watching this video you're gonna get 50% off your first purchase after the free trial is up so get over to rotorpros.com sign up today so what I'm going to do here is we're going to look at a couple core pitchers and then just a couple of teams that I'm going to be stacking right now. Um, and then we'll get into more of the player stuff in the chat later on in the day once we get some lineups confirmed and stuff like that. Um, the only pitcher that isn't confirmed yet, it's about 80%. I'm seeing you know, different reports throughout is Gabriel Yanoa uh, for Baltimore. Um, it's not confirmed on MLB.com yet, so take it with a grain of salt. I just wanted to get in here. Um, enter some data so that I could get the ranks up here on the left. So a couple pitchers um, definitely that stand out tonight. Obviously, um, Patrick Corbin, number one, 10 8 on DraftKings, 10 5 on FanDuel is a minus 145 favorite. A little bit higher total going up against Atlanta. Um, I do like it a lot. He's my number two in my model, as you can see. 28.5% K rate. He's got an excellent ERA, XFIP. High K rate, high swing and strike rate, fairly low walk rate, 7.6%, just a little bit below average. Um, he does create a lot of ground balls. As you can see, he's kind of right in that mid-range, right around average when it comes to fly ball rate. Um, we talked about this before when it comes to his, his exit velocity and hard percentage. He does give up um, a little more than average, but uh, seeing that he you know, produces a lot more ground balls, a lot of that hard contact and exit velocity is going down into the ground. So... Um, don't mind seeing that and then you start looking comparing Woba to ex-Woba and it's very close there as well. So some people may be scared off of obviously the high price day combined with um, going up against Atlanta. Now Atlanta's only been as you can see here looking at the splits just a little bit better than league average uh, against lefties 103 WRC plus 23% K rates right around average. Um, they've been striking out quite a bit over the last 7 and 14 days as you can see here 26 and 25%. Ronald Acuna Jr., uh, their leadoff hitter, arguably their best hitter, um, is going to be likely uh, out tonight. Uh, he, he sat out yesterday, so I'm not real sure if he's going to be back or not. If he's out, definitely that's a bump to Corbin there. Um, their next best hitter, obviously, I would say is uh, Freddie Freeman, you know, arguably number one, 1A, one 1B. One he's got more experience for sure. He's probably a little bit more consistent. He's a lefty. Um, he does hit lefties fairly well, but it is it's definitely not as intimidating of a lineup without Acuna. So I definitely like Corbin tonight, um, provided Acuna is out. I still like him for GPPs, even if uh, Acuna is in there, just because he's the most expensive and on a small slate, especially in GPP formats, we're going to want to make some pivots to get away from some of that ownership. Um, with baseball being a high variant sport, you can definitely get away from guys that are going to be 50% owned. Um, the best hitters in baseball can go over for four, even a couple days in a row. So, um, Small slates are excellent for making those pivots because the the ownership on some of these teams and some of these pitchers is going to be high. So next up, uh, Caleb Smith um, for the Marlins. Now it's a pick 'em right now. They're minus 108, and then you got uh, I'll talk about both these pitchers at once. Merrill Kelly um, minus 102, lowest total of the day, best pitchers park of the day. Um, obviously, we got no weather to worry about. Uh, let's just go over and look at their stats. Uh, Caleb Smith leads the way in K percentage, 31%, 14% swing and strike rate. So he's in that elite territory for sure. But going up against Arizona, who has hit lefties better than righties for the season, um, they've also been, as you can see, well, just above league, league average over the last 14 days. So they're not really standing out by any means, but they haven't struck out a whole bunch. With his upside, um, but down matchup, 
I would say a little less than average matchup. He would be GPP only for me tonight, um, especially at those prices. And then the guy that I'm probably looking at as my number one, the system isn't agreeing with me right now. A lot of that has to do with the Vegas odds, which are just set at like minus 101 to default, just because of we don't know the pitcher yet. So the line hasn't been released as of uh, recording this video. But I'm assuming they're going to be like 160, 170 favorites, San Diego over Baltimore. Um, the game's probably going to be, I'm thinking it's probably seven and a half, eight around there as well when, when, when it's released. I'll have to check that once this video is over, and I will definitely update the sheet. But Paddock would be uh, my number one here today just because of that matchup against Baltimore. Um, they are well below average versus right-handed pitching, 87 WRC+. Plus. Looking at their stats kind of from the all-star break here, they have been one of the hotter teams, 117 WRC+, plus, um, cooling off a bit over the last week, 26% K rate, so that's gone up um, right around league average hitting. So not real too concerned, especially looking at their season numbers. Um, the lineup's really not that intimidating. Chris Paddock has been one of the best pitchers in baseball. He's coming off, I, I, would, I wouldn't call it a, a bad start against the Mets, but uh, he only went five innings, gave up three earned runs, two of them being home runs, and only got four strikeouts in that game. So if that's his down game, I definitely like uh, where his future is trending, definitely. Before that, he went uh, seven and two-thirds against Miami, only eight strikeouts, one walk, only gave up one earned run there. So, And before that... Uh, you know, before his last start, it was like four straight with two or less earned runs, um, three of those with one or less earned runs. So he's been he's been really good. Um, they kind of sent him down to, you know, limit his innings um, in the sense that they wanted him to be up here and be a workhorse for them as they're trying to make the playoffs and stuff. So definitely like Pack against Baltimore, um, especially on FanDuel at only 8900 I really like that price. But even, you know, for cash games, um, on DraftKings, I don't mind going uh, Paddock either because there is some value here that I think we can ride with tonight as an SP2 on the slate. Starts with Sonny Gray. He's number one in my model, um, 9,400 on DraftKings, 9,200 on FanDuel. You're still staying below that $20,000 threshold that we talk about if you pair Gray and Paddock together. You're at 19,600. Definitely don't mind that. And you could argue that Gray could be your... Um, top pitcher on FanDuel as well at only $300 more than Paddock. But, you know, comparing their stats, um, you know, it's pretty close. Paddock's got the better ERA. Gray's got the better XFIP. Um, Gray's got a 2% more K percentage. Um, he walks more, about 3% more. Um, he does get the elite ground ball rate, which kind of gives you that tip over Paddock. So if he's he's got better strikeout upside, He's got, I think, the ground ball percentage and the low fly ball percentage help create a lower floor. There's definitely a case where you could fit Sonny Gray in um, as your top pitcher. The only thing people may be concerned about is the matchup against Pittsburgh. Good news is Josh Bell has been day-to-day, uh, -day, um, so he may not be in the lineup again, so bump to Gray makes it very close with Paddock for me in cash games on FanDuel if uh, Josh Bell is out of the lineup. Other pitches that I'm looking at, um, I was talking about Merrill Kelly. In that matchup between Arizona and Miami, he obviously is cheaper than Caleb Smith. He's got the better matchup going against Miami's offense. But he's obviously not as good a pitcher. Well below average um, K rate. He doesn't walk anyone, so that's good to help his floor, although the upside isn't there. But at 8,200, he's only going to need 16 to 18 points on DraftKings if you're using him as a... Uh, starting pitcher two and just looking at his last starts he's done that in two of his last three he got touched up by Baltimore last start ended up giving you negative points in a good matchup so that kind of hurt but in two fairly plus matchups before that at St. Louis and at home versus Milwaukee he went for 24 and 14 and a half it's a little bit more of a risky SB2 uh, in my opinion being that uh, you really want the win from him being that he's in that 8K range on DraftKings and going up against Caleb Smith, who's the better pitcher, obviously, um, just makes it a lot closer, a little bit more risky. So for my SP2, he's probably going to be a little bit more on the GPP pivot side of things uh, when it comes to SP2. And he might be chalky, too, just um, people pitching against Miami, pitching against Detroit, um, always those pitchers, if, if they have any talent whatsoever. Um, for fantasy, obviously they all got talent there in the majors, but for fantasy, if they got talent, people are turning to uh, those matchups. So he could be uh, a little bit chalky, and that 
you know, maybe make us want to pivot off of him because he's not an elite pitcher. If a non-elite pitcher in these mid-ranges is going to be like super chalky, I really don't mind making those pivots um, just because they're not a proven thing. They're not consistent. So that's maybe one way we want to go. Kind of what I like doing throughout the day is just reading others' articles, seeing some videos, listening to the radio, the fantasy channel and stuff like that, and see who everyone's talking about. Kind of leads us in the right direction of where the ownership's going to be, and I definitely will be discussing that in the members' chat today as well. And then last, uh, well, not lastly, but for cash game consideration, Jaime Berea is definitely going to be there for me tonight. Um, because, well, there's that uh, matchup versus Detroit. They're minus 240 favorites. He's only 7,200 on both sites. Um, the you know the season stats really aren't there. 6.63 ERA looks like it's going to get a little bit better. Almost two runs better on the xFIP side of things. 22% K rate, but it's nice to see that 11% swinging strike rate. So kind of tells me that K rate has a chance to go up um, because he is missing bats. Anything over 10% swinging strike rate, I, I definitely like to see. Um, you start seeing the elite guys like you see here, Corbin Smith, Maeda. They're in the 13 um, plus range. So keep that in mind. Um, he gives up, sorry, we're back to Berea here, 35% um, hard contact, so not bad, not great. Um, he's given up a 369 Woba, 335 X Woba, so that gives him a nice split there, showing some uh, positive regression coming his way, regression to the mean, however you want to call it. Again, um, in a good park, LA has really been good at suppressing the runs. Not so much the power, but the runs are there. And when you're talking Berea, as an SP2 on DraftKings, you're looking for about 14 to 15 points from him. And he's done that in three. Since coming back to the rotation, he's been out since, he was out, um, I believe it was the end of April. He was out and he came back at the start of June. And in five starts since then, he's gone for 18.3, 19.5, 23.7, negative 11.6. That was a rough start against Seattle. He gave up 10 earned runs. And then 16.3 in his last start in Los Angeles against the Dodgers. So um, he's definitely someone I will look at who does have that cash game uh, floor. I think he can give you that 14 to 15 points against Detroit. I think he can get you 20 plus there as well. So he can get you into that three, four X range. Um, so he's a player I definitely think we should consider as a core play. If you, whether you're going Paddock, Gray or Corbin, I think you can get more upgraded bats using Berea as an SP2. And if you want to go really contrarian tonight with your starting pitching, um, Kenta Maeda, as we've seen, he's got huge strikeout upside. He's in Colorado, so he's probably going to be uh, low-owned with that uh, Coors Field game. But looking at the matchup, first of all, Colorado's been below average, 83 WRC plus against uh, right-handed pitching. And then just kind of looking at their, since the All-Star break, last 14 days, 73 WRC plus um, in the last 14 days, 80 in the last seven days so even they got some power bats in there they're playing in colorado i like my as a as a gpp pivot at this price you know looking at uh where his price has been for the season he's been in the 9k range been in the 10k range i don't think him being in colorado with the talent of pitcher that he is that he warrants going down all the way into the sub 7k range on both sides which just seems crazy to me so for gpps i definitely love it So that's all I got for pitching. That's kind of the way I'm breaking down pitching today. Um, early in the day, I definitely like breaking down pitching more than hitting just because we don't know the lineups yet, um, stuff like that, you know, weather, that kind of concerns. But I'm going to go over a couple stacks anyway that I'm looking at tonight. Just going to go over the teams and why I'm targeting them. Um, so let's just dig into that here. So first up, obviously, Los Angeles um, going up against John Gray in Colorado. Um, so we'll always be looking to that call. I think the Dodgers are probably going to end up being the chalk. They do have some cheaper bats as well. So it gives you some value there as well. So I definitely think they're going to be the chalk team. Um, when it comes to John Gray, he's actually been better at home, just slightly about 0.2 when I'm looking at his ERA, 390 at home and 417 on the road. So it's, it's not the greatest of spots. Um, he is giving up, you know, home runs, a little over one home run to lefties, about 1.4 to righties. So definitely a um, little bit of a reverse splits there, but obviously the XFIP's worse against lefties. So I just like the Dodgers because, you know, it's in Colorado. John Gray hasn't been great. He's got a 1.4 whip, so he's, he doesn't give up a lot of fly balls. So I mean, that upside's maybe not there for home runs. 
um, and that's a 27.7% fly ball percentage with half of his starts coming in Coors, which is really good. But the hard contact is up, and 18% uh, home run to fly ball rate. So, like I said, the Dodgers have some cheap bats. They have some expensive bats. I think you can mix them together um, and, and make a really good either you know two three man stack for cash or four or five man stack for for GPPs tonight. I like pivoting off myself and going towards uh, Jordan targeting against Jordan Zimmerman um, with the Angels. The Angels haven't, you know, they've been about league average lately, league average overall. Um, they're better against righties, uh, 109 WRC plus versus 103 versus lefties. But the big thing here for me is the matchup. Um, Jordan Zimmerman just hasn't been <clears throat> good at all. His last four starts, he's given up four, six, seven, and seven earned runs. Two, earned, two home runs in his last start there. He's got a 1.7 whip. So the, he's not walking a bunch, but he's given up a ton of hits. Um, so definitely looking at targeting against him with the Angels tonight. And like I said, they've only been league average um, lately. A little below league average. A little below where they were for the season. I like Fletcher leading off. If he's going to be lead off, it's a very nice uh, salary. Not totally salary relief, but uh, mid-range play. He's kind of seen his price come up, being that he's back up in that lead off spot. Mike Trout, Otani, um, Upton there for GPP. Cole Calhoun, I think, makes makes a lot of sense as well. Um, tonight, he's been hitting in the five spot, but he you know he spends time at the top of the order there as well. Um, definitely, you know, he's given up a 358 Woba to righties, but a 400 Woba and 532 slugging percentage to lefties. So we can target both sides of the plate, but definitely lefties. So that's why Calhoun um, definitely stands out there. Otani stands out as well as, as good plays, good lefties that we can throw out against him. I also like the Reds going up against Jordan Lyles. Let's just, I'm just going to break down him here real quick. Uh, one and a half whip. So he's given up. You know, kind of like Pannonia below him, uh, Kansas City, but I definitely lean Cincinnati a little bit. But they're both got high whips, and I've explained before, that's what I'm kind of looking for, guys that either walk a lot of guys or give up a ton of hits. That high whip creates more opportunities for the other team to score runs. That's obviously what we're looking for here. 18% um, home run to fly ball rate, 42% hard contact, almost 90 mile an hour exit velocity. So he, he had that good start to the season where he's, you know, probably sitting around like a two, two and a half ERA for like, the first, you know, leading up to about mid-May, then things kind of went sideways for him. And uh, since May 23rd, he's, you know, he's had a lot of rough starts. Not just inconsistent, but rough starts. He's going up six, four. He's going up three or more earned runs in all but one start since that date, which is nine starts. So eight of his starts, he's given up three or more. Um, four times, he's given up four or more, and twice, he's given up six or more. Three times he's given up six or more, I mean, sorry. And he's given up a ton of home runs, 12 home runs in those nine starts as well. So definitely be targeting um, against Jordan Lyles and just looking at his splits and kind of what we can concentrate on for Cincinnati. It's kind of the same story. He gives up 100 points more Woba, 416 Woba to lefties and a 603 slugging percentage. So definitely going to be targeting lefties, but I, I don't mind uh, any of the Cincinnati guys tonight. Next up, I like Washington, more of a GPP pivot, um, just because Dallas Keuchel, you know, he hasn't been terrible. He doesn't give up fly balls. Under 20% fly balls is easily the best on the slate. He's given up some home runs when he does give up those fly balls. Um, seven home runs in his seven starts since returning on uh, the 21st of June. So... I think we can target against him with Washington. Washington's got a powerful lineup, obviously. They hit lefties better is another thing that stands out when looking at the splits here. And it's a pretty good hitter's park in Washington, top 10 in both run production and home run production. So I think just with their price, when looking at the rest of the slate, I like going with them a little bit over uh, the Dodgers, who are going to be very high owned, um, kind of in that same kind of price range. The top of the Washington lineup, you're looking at, uh, excuse me, uh, Trey Turner, Adam Eaton, Rendon, Soto, um, possibly Howie Kendrick in there as well. Um, so definitely looking at those righties that hit the lefties well. I don't mind Eaton um, or Soto. There would be more GPP plays, but I really like Turner and Rendon, uh, two of my top plays overall on the whole entire slate will be on there. So those are the four teams I'm really looking at and concentrating on right now. Um, just outside of those four teams, like I mentioned, would be Kansas City, 
missing Mondesi really hurts. Um, they've actually been quite worse against lefties, so I think they may show up to be very low owned. But I like the matchup against Panoni here. Um, 556 XFIP is better than the ERA, but still in danger territory. One and a half whip. Tons of fly balls. He doesn't give up a whole bunch of home runs yet because he's really limited the hard contact. But seeing a whip like that given teams against Kansas City, you know, Merrifield at the top makes a lot of sense. If you're looking, um, you know, cash games, his price has come down. You got Alex Gordon. He's got some decent splits against lefties. Hunter Dozier, um, Jorge Soler. So definitely GPP, but uh, definitely one direction I will be going in GPP. All right, that kind of covers uh, the pitchers that I'm targeting tonight, as well as some of the stacks that I'll be looking at, some of the teams I'll be looking at the target from cash games, as well as GPPs. Definitely, like I said, if you're not a RotoPros member, get over to rotopros.com, sign up for your free trial, jump in the chat, see what we're all about, um, our one-on-one -on -one coaching, stuff like that, weather updates, lineup updates, um, sharing a ton of stats, looking at advanced stats, working on lineup construction, contest selection, pretty much anything that goes along with DFS. Bankroll management, which is probably number one um, thing that we try and teach our customers from, and from especially when looking at MLB, just because it's a daily grind um, for you know five months straight, five, six months straight here. So bankroll management is key. So that's one thing that we really try and get through every single day is um, how to manage your entries each and every night along with choosing the right contest so that you put yourself in the right position to be profitable more consistently. Thanks for joining me. If you got any questions, hit me up, like I said, in the chat room on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine, and I'll see you in the chat room. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.